Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's me coming back at you with another vid. Now, first things first, I gotta say uh, congratulations to to, uh, to Terrence Crawford. And I know I'm late on this. Um, congratulations to t uh, to Terrence Crawford for his victory and his uh, first title defense of his WBO light um, welterweight title against uh, Perry J uh, Perry Jean, who's not a very very um, easy opponent to fight, you know. Um, Keep in mind, Perry John is a guy who took Lamont Peterson to 12 rounds. And, you know, it was a good back and forth um, fight um, between him and Peterson at that time. But uh, anyhow, um, I'll make this real short here. I'm not going to go into details about the fight as far as round by round, whatnot. Uh, I just want to go in and, and dwell into the main points here. What I noticed in the first round is that... Um, Perry Jean has very good hand speed, and he has a little power in that um, speed, particularly in the right hand. There was one time in the round when he threw a right hand uh, against uh, a right cross against, or I think it was a straight right hand or a bit of a hook. I think it was a little short hook, and uh, it landed flush on Crawford, and Crawford took it very well. And so that shows that he has very good punch resistance. But as soon as uh, Crawford felt that power on that right hand and the speed of, um, of Jean, he immediately switched to softball that really threw uh, John off his time, threw his timing off. As soon as he, as soon as he did that, he caught him with a good hook and knocked him out in the first round. And I am just so amazed of Crawford's ability to uh, to adjust in the middle rounds when he's at, you know, when he's facing adversity. Okay, I know Keith Thurman's another guy like that likes to switch softball just to throw off his opponent's timing. Um, if he sees that there's some bit of um, trouble, if he's having a bit of trouble trying to um, trying to get his opponent out of there in a certain style that he usually likes to fight, which is the right hand orthodox style, like um, Terrence Crawford likes to do. So the thing is, as soon as he switched to southpaw, you know, Perry John pretty much just couldn't do anything. He didn't know what to do. I mean, I noticed something in that fight when he uh, when uh, when Crawford had switched to southpaw, Perry John. <laughs> had constantly moved to his right all night long against Crawford. That's something you don't do against a softball fighter. You don't move to your right because if you continue to move to your right, you're giving him too many openings, and that's what Crawford did. Crawford kept countering him with some jabs when he kept moving to his right, through some um, lower body shots. It just really, really, really um, gave on Crawford so many opportunities. He created his distance. Uh, and uh, speaking of that, I mean, his long reach also disrupted uh, – Perry John's timing because Perry John is a very short guy. He, you know, he can only fight in the inside. But other than that, it just, it's just that I, you know, obviously you just couldn't give him a round in that fight. And he got knocked down twice. And of course, the fight ultimately got stopped. I think it was in the eighth round, I believe, or the tenth. I think tenth round. TKO. So, um, but the one thing I really want to get into is the fact that after the, uh, on the post fight in ring interview with Max Kellerman, uh, Kellerman asked, um, Crawford this interesting question. Um, it seems like, quote, it seems like you're in line for the uh, mega fight, not mega fight. It's a big, big showdown with Manny Pacquiao. What do you say about that? And, and Terrence Crawford quoted by saying, Bob, let's make it happen. I'm ready for it. End quote. Now, if you ask me personally, my opinion on that, uh, I think, you know, Crawford is ready for that fight, no doubt. I would love to see that fight. I mean, it, it is a pay-per-view bout, no doubt about it. Um, it would potentially draw probably 500,000 buys, if that. Maybe 400,000 to 600,000 buys, give or take. I would definitely like, I would definitely pay to see that fight. But I am more interested is in Crawford um, unifying the 140 division because it's very, very stacked right now. It's got a whole load of talent. I mean, for example, um, there's been talk about him and Victor Bastal somehow um, entering a unification bout, because, uh, bout, given the fact that Pascal, I'm sorry, not Pascal, Pastal has the um, the WBC title um, after um, knocking out Lucas Matisse, which I was very shocked about that. <laughs> and um, the WBO champion, or I could, Crawford is the WBO champion, uh, and the WBA champion is... Uh, Adrian Broner, who, by the way, didn't even mention that he wanted to fight either Postello Crawford or even um, Provotnikov, who's not the champion, but he's still ranked up there with the uh, light welterweights. Um, and then you have the IBF champion, uh, Cesar uh, Cuenca, 
Uh, and, it was, <laughs> and this is an interesting fact about Cesar Cuenca because he actually won the title um, after, you know, uh, Peterson was uh, stripped by the IBF due to the fact that he didn't win. You know, he didn't. He failed to defeat Danny Garcia, especially he didn't really defend that title at the timely manner that the IBF wanted him to defend it. So, um, Cuenca uh, <laughs> has an interesting record here. All right. He's um, 48 0, and he has two KOs. <laughs> he's from Argentina. He's a southpaw, by the way, and he's undefeated. So, <laughs> obviously, he's one win away for tying Floyd Mayweather's record, which I don't think nobody really wants to talk about because Cesar Cuenca is not a known name. So, I don't know why these um, Floyd fanatics kept running around and saying that the 49 old record was a big deal because Rocky Marciano held that record. It just goes to show that how ignorant, ignorant they are because. That record is a heavyweight record, so it doesn't mean much. I mean, Julio Cesar Chavez holds the record for most consecutive wins as a non-heavyweight. So let's not go there. I mean, that, that's not the whole point of the video. The whole point of this video is that who I like to see Crawford fight. Now, Cesar Cuenca, yeah, that could be a possible matchup. But, you know, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that unification about that. would be an interesting fight. So we'll see. Obviously, I'll um, favor Crawford in that one because given that... Um, Quinqua only has two wins by KO. Uh, that just goes to show that he doesn't really have any knockout power. He can only outpoint you. You know, given the fact he is a southpaw, and southpaw fighters are very, very difficult to uh, to fight and prepare for. So, I mean, we'll see. But um, the main, 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 main um, bout that I would like to see is him versus Amir Aman. Now, let me tell you why, because you got Crawford, who's more of the, um, you know, an orthodox slash softball, very unusual, difficult fighter to fight with long reach, great hand speed, great jab, great footwork against Amir Aman, who's more of the aggressor fighter. He's not really a much of a boxer, but he's more of a come forward fighter, sometimes fight, fight a little bit flat footed, but he does have a lot of pride in that right hand, especially when he comes with that hook. So Amon, the only thing about Amon that I would like to say his flaw is that he does have leaky defense. So he has to tighten that up a little bit. But that's definitely a bout that I would like to see. And Amir Amon, I'm telling you guys, you need to watch out for that man because he is a you know, I mean, he is a bull at 140. And obviously, I think there he is a mandatory challenger to um Pastel's WBC title. So that would be an interesting bout. So I mean, I would love to see those fights happen. Um rather than um, Crawford uh, fight Pacquiao. Again, I'm not saying that I don't mind seeing that fight taking place between Crawford and Pacquiao, but I think he has a lot more to gain if he, he fought these top light welterweights. And if the Pacquiao fight does happen, I can see why, and I don't mind seeing it because it's I view it as more of a uh, pass-the-torch type of thing because given the fact that Pacquiao has pretty much one more fight left in him, so... Uh, you know, he has accomplished a lot, so, you know, he has nothing more left to prove. So that, in that sense, you know, like I said, that fight would make sense, just more of a passing the torch type of scenario where Crawford could be positioned to be the new uh, pound for pound, number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I know Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez holds that status at this point, but if Crawford somehow beats, if the fight does get made and Crawford beats Pacquiao, I can see Crawford moving way up on that list, probably between number one and number two. So we'll see. Um, other than that, uh, drop a comment below. Subscribe. Signing off. Peace.